Hi there. In this video, we're continuing to talk about hypothesis testing in the context of linear regression. And remember that last time we had our sort of sample of data and we estimated using that sample, we sort of got, got out that an individual's level of income was equal to 30,000, let's say US dollars, plus 0.1 times the parental income. And we were basically trying to understand whether it was the case that this 0.1 came about as a result of us picking a weird sample, or whether it actually was the case in the population as a whole that parental income does in fact affect an individual's level of income, or a parental income affects their children's income. And we spoke about least squares estimators as following, at least asymptotically, some sort of normal distribution, which depended on sigma squared, the sort of variance of our error term within our sort of population process. And we said the trouble with this distribution is that we don't actually know this population parameter. So we had to sort of make a correction for that. And what we did is we took our sort of least squared estimator value, let's say beta star least squared, and we divided that by the standard error in our sort of least squared estimator. And the idea is that even though we don't know this population parameter sigma squared, we know and most statistical software programs will actually give us an estimate of the standard error of beta least squares. And it will allow us to then basically know what this constructed statistics distribution looks like. We know the parameters which this sort of distribution depends on. So we're able to sort of use that for inference. So the idea here is that there is some sort of null hypothesis, which is, let's say, the true population parameter is equal to some value. Normally, when we think about the null hypothesis, we say that the null uh, or the, the true population parameter is equal to zero for the null hypothesis. But there are times when we don't. And if it's not, in fact, uh, our, our null hypothesis isn't that it's equal to zero, then we actually need to amend our t statistics, which we formed here, by taking off our sort of null uh, hypothesis beta from the sort of least squared estimate of beta. But in most circumstances, and in fact most statistical programs, unless you tell them to do otherwise, it will assume that um, the null hypothesis is in fact that beta in the population is in fact equal to zero. Okay, so that's the null hypothesis. Then what's the alternative hypothesis? Well, in this context, we are basically interested in whether the effect of parental income is in fact positive on an individual's level of income. So we're sort of only interested in the sort of upper tail of or the upper alternative test. OK, so what effect does it actually have to our distribution by taking off our sort of null hypothesis value of beta? Well, the idea behind doing that is that we actually come up with a distribution which is centered, at least under the null hypothesis, around zero. Yeah, so this is the sort of distribution that we would get if we... So remember what we're trying to do here. We have some sort of population. And if we took repeated samples from that population, S1, S2, yeah, and we do that for a long time, and if we were to use our least squared estimators on each of those samples, and for each of those samples, then we were to construct the t-distribution, or a t-statistic rather, then it would turn out that the sampling distribution for this statistic, the t-statistic, is something which we call a t-distribution. Yeah, And this is how it would look around, if the null hypothesis were true, it would be centered around zero. OK, so that's under the sort of null hypothesis. How could we have got a value of 0.1, though, when we estimated this equation using our sample? Well, there are two different ways we could have got a value of 0.1. Remember, this value of 0.1 here, we'd have to divide that through by the standard error in that estimate for us to get a value for the t-statistic. So let's say we had a value for the standard error of our estimate up here, and it turned out that the actual estimated standard error was 0.01. In which case, we could sort of figure out the t 
value for this particular coefficient, it would be equal to our sort of estimated value from beta least squares divided by the standard error, which in this case would be equal to 10. Okay, so how could we have got this value of 10? Well, there are two different ways we could have got a value of 10. If the null hypothesis is true, it might have been the case that we had picked a sort of very weird sample and just by chance, by, by mere fact of we're picking a weird sample, that would mean that we would have got a sort of obscure value for t, which was quite a long way away from the sort of zero value which you'd expect. So that's one way we could have got a value of t equal to 10. But there's also another way, which is if the null hypothesis wasn't true, and we actually had a distribution which looks something like this. So again, I'm sort of, it's going to be t distributed, but it might not be distributed around zero because of the fact that in reality, the true population parameter might be, let's say, 0.2. So this sort of parameter, which we actually estimate here, might be underestimating what's actually going on in the population. And obviously, it's not hard to get a value of 10 if the alternative hypothesis is true. Yeah, so this second distribution here represents the alternative. This first one represents the null. So the idea with hypothesis testing is that we basically have to evaluate how likely is it that I would have got a value of 10 if it were the case that the null hypothesis were true. And that's sort of represented by this area of this sort of tail here. And we can sort of actually estimate that. That, that. That's not something which is difficult to find out. But typically what we draw, what we do is we look up in a t-table. We look up for, in this case, we're looking at a one-tailed test because we're just concerned with the alternative hypothesis that beta is greater than zero. We're not concerned with the alternative, which is beta is just different from zero. Um, so we look up in a t-table, because these sort of distributions have been tabulated, we look up, let's say, a value of uh, 0.5 for the probability. And that will tell us some critical value above which it is very unlikely that I would have got this result if the null hypothesis were true. And typically for a t-distribution, it obviously depends on the number of observations, but it's around two. And given that we've got a value of 10, it turns out that it's really, really unlikely that we would have got these results by chance. So we would have actually, in this case, rejected the null hypothesis, which would mean that we would be able to say, at least with some confidence, opposed to before we, where we had no confidence, that in the population, it is possibly the case that parental income does in fact affect their children's income.